So here we are, GSTAT1 on its uh, old launcher. Nice to see this one again. Maybe, I, I mean we've we've updated this launcher before. I, it would seem a shame to use a more expensive launcher and this is where I really want to have a mission controller give its input about the costs of these sorts of things. But yeah, I think we need to... Uh, do we have uh, Forseti? The, this is the Dellinger, I think. Okay, uh, new plan. I'm going to quit out. I'm going to install MechJeb. <laughs> and uh, that will allow me to uh, fix this up right. Because I don't want to do all the calculations on the fly. And what I really need to know right now is the mass of this. And uh, pulling out a calculator and doing it on the fly is going to be annoying. So. Let me uh, get MechJeb properly installed on this and I'll be back with you. Alright, looks like MechJeb is ready and activated. Very good. Let's get rid of the this from there because MechJeb is integrated into all the pro uh, all the all the command parts in this in this install. Let's have some well let's just have that for now. So, Delta V stats, yes. Okay, I want all stats. And, oh, only 0.9. Is this the Dellinger launcher? I, I, I assume this is the one. Let me just pull it off from here. Yeah, this is the improved one. This should be even more capable. Yeah. Okay, uh, but we need to fix this probe. This probe needs more solar panels. Uh, let's let's make it wider, so we can fit more panels on. So let's say we, because, yeah. So let let's let's imagine here that we're really hitting these eight panels, and we need to do better than that. So let's see. Um, oh, this. This tank was still limited by the strange. Okay, so let's let, let's just uh, well, let's just keep that aside. Batteries. Let's see now. Did I have anything else important on here? No, just the solar panels in the tank. So I'll dump that. And let's make sure. Oh, it's just a conic tank. Do we have? Okay, we should, we need a service module. Aha, big. All right, so we should be able to make a nice big tank here. Right. Uh, so the original probe had the problem that we were limited to 0.625, but we don't have that problem anymore. So that gives extra surface area for extra solar panels. And perhaps, uh, actually, I want five-way symmetry. Uh, maybe, maybe we make it even fatter than this. Now we don't really need the batteries because we can put electric charge in the tank itself, right? Yes. That's not add quite so much, but let's say one tenth of the tank should be electric charge okay so that's our new G stat uh, as far as the solar panels concerned we didn't need the battery space so that's fine we've got the commutron 16 at the top so that's fine we've got a reaction wheel so that's handling that part of things uh, we probably don't need RCS um, I hope, uh, let, let me just uh, dump this and grab this one just in case. Let me make sure the stats say min thrust 3.35, max thrust 6.7. I hope that operates properly. I, I, I'm not great at editing these parts just yet, so I'm hoping my edit was correct. Now, um, let's fill her up a bit. So let's say 
I, I stretched the tank a little bit to get the extra panels on. I don't think I need it quite so big though. It's well, no, it, they'll start overlapping the panels if I change it now. Okay, um, let's start off with uh, filling it up with. Oh, 2.4 is a bit heavy. So, um, let let me uh, throw in a tank of hydrazine to fill up space and then we'll remove it okay and so now I'll add oh, 10,000 electric charge maybe I should just fill up electric charges it doesn't weigh that much okay that, that looks a little bit better um, not quite there yet though let me just remove these and instead let me add a tiny bit of hydrazine let's say 400 and whatever the remainder is there now add the amines and nitric acid and then remove that okay it looks like with that our our mass will be 1.5 tons which is fine that should be good our our commutron is uh, connected to that. Now the only question is whether I should put a commuton 32 up there instead of a 16. Here are the bonuses and drawbacks of each. Uh, this one only draws 0.01 charge per second but has 25,000 kilometer range. This one has 0.06 charge per second and has 50,000 kilometers. That 50,000 kilometers means that it is just that one is within range of mission control from geostationary orbit, geosync. It's not stationary because it's got to be inclined. Um, we've now got 12 panels facing the sun directly in theory, uh, compared to 8. But I don't think that's really enough. Maybe we should extend the whole thing, make it bigger. Uh, or maybe we should go to the research center and grab some new solar panels. Let's let's pack this up and save it, and then go get those solar panels. I think that has to be a thing now. I I'm not too sure about these AIES solar panels. Um, they may work out. They may not. Oh, we don't have to do this trick anymore, do we? This uh, fairing trick. This this does not need to happen. Uh, we needed 2 meter. I think we've got 2 meter now. Uh, I know that's one. Ring fairing base. No, I guess we don't have 2 meter. That's interesting. Okay, well this one should work. Oh no, 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 no. No, don't do that. Come on. Okay. Well, not quite the look I was working, uh, hoping for, but... Could you like? Well, I guess it's because of the bulkiness of the probe itself. Does it allow us to give extra height onto this thing? No, I think it's only extra radius. Well, let me see. What can we do with extra radius? Okay, well, I don't know. I don't really need the extra radius, and that's just extra drag, so let's not do that. Hmm, looks like uh, updating MechJib has given new little things that I have to research here. Uh, MechJib's functions are now divided between the tech levels. Okay, anyway, uh, let's take a very good look, because we definitely need... What are those? Okay, well, some sort of fairings. Interesting. Um, 
I think the only fairings I didn't... I guess maybe I forgot to delete the Nova Punch fairings. Maybe. Because when I reinstalled Nova Punch, that might be a thing. Okay. So I'm very carefully going through trying to find out where solar panels might be hiding. These are the ones we're looking at, really. Let's see now. Uh, it says 3.3 .3 per minute. This says 3.8 per minute. The power flows only when the panel is completely retracted. Uh, okay, I don't know what that means. Um, battery, solar panel... 2.2 per minute. Where is the ones that we use now? One point one per minute. Okay, so these are better by a factor of three. That's good. I mean, obviously, the I'm reluctant because we're spending two hundred science on this thing, and we won't be able to buy stuff that's five hundred science until we do more science if we decide to spend it on this particular item but there's nothing for it I think alright let's get it ah there's the ones that I really want oh 300 science uh, shall we go in for that tracking speed oh that's something that this doesn't have this doesn't have a little tracking speed, so maybe it'll be fixed and that'll be all sorts of problems. Huh. Yeah, th even this one doesn't have any rotating mechanism. And I have to assume that this one doesn't either. Well, if we're gonna do this right, we're gonna do this right. Uh, let's, let's get these solar panels as well, and we're just gonna have to find some way of getting more science. Opens up new possibilities. These guys. Improvement in solar panel area. And batteries. Well, I, I, I don't think I would care to go so far as to buy these batteries. Well, I don't know. 19,000 electric charge is quite a lot, isn't it? Okay, uh, let's go back to the VAB. So clearly we've spent uh, a lot of mo uh, a lot of science now, not a lot of money, a lot of science, and we should take advantage of that. I don't need these, I don't think. And perhaps we can make this smaller now. Let's keep it to around one meter. Let's see about our new solar panels. So, how about uh, closer to the tail end? I think six will be good, and they'll go with sort of the flow that I've got going here. Let's hope these new solar panels do their thing. Otherwise, we're going to be short on electric charge. Now we only have three of these facing panels. Shall we swap out for the Commutron? Well, let's see how much charge... Well, these turn. It's tough to say because they do, uh, do rotate to track the sun. So the question is whether I want the Commutron 32 at the top. Well, 0.08 charge per second, so we've got 16 there, 22, and that doesn't require any, but let's say 23, let's say 24, just for the sake of being good about it. Mm. 0.2425 per second, just for rounding. 0.6. 
Okay, so 15, 15 per minute. And these solar panels, each of them gets six per minute. Probably some of them are going to be blocked at any given time. But yeah, let's go with the 32 instead. Not a whole lot of them. And we have to make sure to action... Oh no, that's not the right place. Okay, let me make sure I didn't do anything too silly. Oh, and let's fix the tank. Seventeen hundred might be a little bit too tight. Let's increase the size of the tank. And maybe decrease some of the electric charge in, or maybe not. Let's go to twelve thousand. Add uh, no ten thousand should be fine. Still not quite as much as I want. That's more like it. Let's go to 8 degrees of symmetry on the, these solar panels. Alright, I think uh, we have a workable G-stat here. The question is whether I can launch it properly, given that I haven't launched a Dellinger launcher in quite a while. So, we are about to find out whether I remember how to launch this thing. Yep, it looks good for uh, for a trip up. Let's do a different configuration to... Oh uh, no, not that. that. Now, the updated uh, engine ignition has something about pressurized tanks, and I'm not too sure how everything is going to work out. Uh, these, uh, for instance, might not be, because I'm still using the old craft file, it might not be updated properly or something like that. You, there's too many variables involved when you update something like this. But we're going to try this out. That should at least keep things stable. No, that's not what I wanted to do. This one. Okay, no more stalling. Let's get out there. Alright, I've got my custom info window all configured. I did that off camera. Uh, we are on FAR 13.1 now, so just for you to know, all the all the realism overhaul stuff should be updated. Okay, all up, SAS on. Let's see our position relative to everything. So we're sort of like this. Maybe we should uh, go for an oblique over here instead of over here. Well, we'll see. It's probably... it depends on how our orbit turns out. Alright. So everything's a go. I think... I think I'll use Mechjeb's S, uh, Smart SAS ASS to uh, keep the launch a little bit more sanitary. Alright. So, off we go. So I'm going to prepare a uh, pitch to 85. I should have put hull cams on this, but uh, right now we're uh, strictly business in terms of getting our satellite situation all managed. This isn't a mission per se. This is just getting the infrastructure 
all nice and neat. So we're just going to go to 90 degrees, so we're going to have an inclination of uh, 28 degrees or so. And I'm going to accept that and see how it works, basically. So we've got the volumetric clouds in, so that's one bonus. Now here's the thing, no matter what I have done, uh, so I, I, as I understand it, the menu for the environmental effects is Alt-N, but I just pressed Alt-N and I can't get the menu. I've tried changing it to O just in case, I, I know I see the GUI key code in the settings and that doesn't work. I did that just in case it was conflicting with something but it doesn't seem to work so I can't get the the settings for environmental visual enhancements up and I've never seen it up before. I, I really should try and install it into a fully stock install to to try it out. Yeah, I think we can dump the fairings. Good enough. We're going to be going to high orbit anyway. Okay. Clouds. Uh, the reason I wanted uh, Alt N, I was hoping that uh, some cloud setting would solve this this particular problem that I'm having right now. This one in specific, with these circles. It seems like the cloud layer is clipping the surface. At least I'm thinking that's what's happening here. So I figured if I could raise it, that would help. But I can't bring up that setting. So maybe I'll have to look in the settings file for the. Well, anyway, we uh, eventually shift to this this mode for the clouds. But but yeah, maybe I'll have to look in the settings file for the clouds. So it's going to be an interesting complication to try and send things to the moon now that we're at Kennedy Space Center, and of course that's partly the reason I chose to stick with it. it. It is the challenge. I mean of course I could have moved to Guiana, uh, French Guiana and launched from the European Space Agency's launch center which is closer to the equator. Uh, practically on the equator. It's right around here isn't it? But, um, but yeah, decided not to do that. Could have picked any number of locations. And since I knew how to change the settings in both uh, both real solar system and in remote tech, I can well, pick any arbitrary location as long as I figure out that it's not going to be like under the surface. That's sort of important. Yep, there's Florida, but I uh, can't get enough of seeing that. So we're gonna stick with this and see what additional wrinkles it throws into the whole the whole picture. So for moon missions the way I'm thinking is that probably we should try and figure out when the moon is furthest north compared to Earth. So actually this wouldn't be a bad time to launch. Uh, so you can see the moon's inclination there and yeah basically once the KSC moved to right here we would launch for it because as we'll find out once this thing this G stat gets into orbit that'll actually be the high inclination uh, the high latitude point for the orbit and then it'll have a low latitude point at the opposite side of the planet at least that's what I'm thinking uh, I have not tested this out yet Trying to update everything was quite an adventure. I actually originally tried to move the save into the same install as I did the 200th uh, KSP video special in, but it turned out that KSP Interstellar didn't quite like working with the, tech, the, the realistic progression tech tree. It kept wanting me to update the KSP Interstellar tech tree, and uh, if I did that, 
then it would change the tech tree to that tech tree instead of the realism overhaul, uh, the realistic progression light tech tree. So that was a bit annoying. Um, though that's partly probably because of because I'm importing the uh, say I'm sure it would have worked out just fine if I had just started a new thing and told it which tech tree I'm using then probably KSB Intercell wouldn't have been so annoying. Uh, strangely, in when I tried to do that move, the toolbar did appear in the in the starting scene, where it isn't appearing right now. So that's curious. That this is the most updated version. You can see with the configure button visibility is a thing in the... and oh yeah I installed Kerbal Alarm Clock because everybody likes me to install Kerbal Alarm Clock so I did that we've got Kerbal Alarm Clock just in case oops I'm zooming in at the same time I'm scrolling I'll probably add a few more mods the reason I wasn't adding more mods before was because I didn't want to add uh, the texture management, the texture reduction but since the the current situation required me to updating everything. Uh, partly the NASA missions took up some RAM space and also the new texture on the planet took up some RAM space. Um, all of that contributed to the fact that I needed to add texture reduction. And now that I have texture reduction, now I actually have more space to work with and can install new mods. So if you have any suggestions for other mods I should add, this would be a good time to mention them. Okay, that's that stage to, uh, over with, and yeah, uh, let's just, uh, oh crud, there's no decoupler, there's no decoupler on this, <laughs> why do I always fail at that, this one doesn't have a decoupler, okay, thank you, alright, fine, um, yeah, well, it's in orbit now. I can't do anything about it. Uh, can we... I wonder if burning it all... Th does it push us around if I actually activate the next engine? Yeah, uh, hello. Nope, doesn't have any effect in the slightest. Well, let's... Maybe we can burn this thing off. I don't think so. No, no, it's it's uh, reaching a limit. All right, all right. I'm satisfied. All right. So this is gonna be a piece of space junk now. Let's uh, let's go back to VAB, fix this problem, and launch a new one. And I'll skip some of the intermediate stuff and uh, just try and get into orbit as quickly as possible. All right. So yeah. So just to be clear, the other one is still in orbit. I didn't revert. Uh, it will provide communication assistance as it can. I mean, it's got an antenna. It's uh, now in a sort of a iffy orbit, but still in orbit. I guess this is the best one to use. So yeah, it's gonna do its thing. Alright, once more. Actually, let's make absolutely sure that we've got the right, right one there. Alright, I'm not going to bore you with most of the launch. Let's just get out there and do this quickly. Alright, let's not make a big fuss about this. SS on, throttle up and launch. Off we go. 
And I'll see you once we get to a decent altitude with this thing. Okay, so we're on our way again. And uh, an idea just occurred to me. Maybe, maybe the maybe squad should add one more facility to the KSC. Uh, an engine, well, basically an engine research lab. Uh, a Kerbal Propulsion Laboratory, if you will. And there you would be able to create engines. And uh, you could, in the tech tree, there would be technology to put together an engine that you could research, like nozzles and, uh, you know, improved fuel injectors and stuff like that. And you can create a custom engine. Now, you, uh, you would still have the normal engines available. But if you got new technology, you could put together an engine, and of course, if you uh, gave it uh, unreasonable stats for its uh, what you got for its components, uh, it would explode, and you'd be able to test it, and you know there'll be kerbals scurrying around in fright. But then, if uh, if you put the right components and you put reasonable statistics, I mean not statistics, stats uh, on on the engine so you'll be able to configure the stats so you'll be trying for a certain thrust in ISP and or whatever I mean, I don't know too much about how to make engines but you'll just have a bunch of sliders and then you'll be able to mess around with it and if you could create some sort of mechanic whereby people could create custom engines based on the technology specifically engine technology that they can unlock in the tech tree that could be very interesting and of course you could base it off of real stuff. Just a thought. I mean, that could make things quite a bit more flexible and add a new dimension because right now we just get the engines and we don't test them. We assume they're 100% efficient and 100, uh, not efficient, reliable. But maybe there would also be a reliability rating. So like uh, you would uh, create an engine in the Kerbal Propulsion Laboratory and and uh, it would be 99% reliable and you would know that ahead of time and so the other 1% it might either overheat uh, excessively or sputter and then and then then just not ignite properly something like that so you would try for as high reliability as possible with uh, stats so you would uh, lower the thrust a bit and get slightly less overheating for instance more reliability that way it might be too complicated for people though, but I don't see how it could be added to the game without Squad being the one to do it, so that's, that's the only thing. I don't know if a modder could possibly add such a thing. It would be a complicated add-on and uh, maybe not, not as engaging as the rest of the game, so... So I guess if you were to pursue that idea, you'd have to have a new category in the parts uh, just engine components and you would only be able to use those in the Kerbal Propulsion Laboratory. You wouldn't be able to use those in the VAB or SPH. I don't know if that mechanic is possible in the game or whether in uh, in the SPH, VAB and uh, any other similar screen you would have to have all the parts displayed. So that's another complication. Okay, let's continue. Alright, that works out just fine this time. So this should make it easier for us to put commsats around the moon as well, these extendable solar panels. That's part of the reason why I picked them up because they'd really be necessary in order to put uh, commsats on the moon efficiently. Oh, uh, I should check the throttling on this. So let's say I go to half throttle. No, no, it still has its full range of throttle. Need an extra ignite there. Anyway, uh, yeah, it needed its uh, full range. Of, it has its full range of throttle. So I've I've done the. I have not done a sufficiently good job on making its throttle go from. I guess I only changed uh, the 
information in the entry, but then change it in reality? I don't know how that works. I'll have to look into it. So it is my intention to uh, have it go from 3.35 to 6.7. But apparently I have not succeeded in that yet. Actually, we probably don't even need to use these other dishes since the on the directional on this one this no no uh, this one has a range of 50,000 kilometers and we won't be further than that from from mission control well actually uh, the diagonal might be we'll have to see it might be that our diagonal would be longer than that. I guess just in case we'll uh, have one of these uh, longer range dishes target mission control. These have 500,000 kilometers. Uh, sufficient for the moon, but uh, we're getting close to where I have to cut this off. Well, let me go to half power, which is what I wanted to be the minimum of it. Okay. All right, so that's our that's our thing right now, and you can see <laughs> the inclination. We can try and fix that as as we get. Uh, across the equator but we might as well do that once we're far away from the planet so that it costs less. The closer we are the more it'll cost to do the inclination change. Alright I'm gonna call that close enough and adjust it as we do the burn. Doesn't look like we'll have too much too much uh, fuel for further adjustments though. That's sort of a flaw. So I, I don't think we will be able to do an inclination change given that we'll only have well, about 150 meters per second left. And any adjustments we want to make in our orbit is, are going to be a little bit taxing. Well the rest of our CompSat systems be, seems to be working quite well. But I really want to see a direct line with the mission control. Doesn't look like we've quite got it here. We seem to be a little bit too oblique. But perhaps it's good enough. Not quite reliable though. Alright, um... You point at actually uh, at this point we should probably stop using that and start using the flight computer with remote tech. Much as I think the remote tech tends to spin the craft quite a lot more. All right. So we we'll want 100% uh, throttle and let's just program it in. And yeah, go for it. On the bright side, it's definitely the case that if a satellite, uh, if any mission wasn't able to see GSTAT 1, it's a pretty good chance they'll be able to see this one. I mean, it's at a different inclination and a different uh, location in orbit. So anything reasonably distant should be able to pick up one of the two. And by reasonably distant I just mean the moon because both of these only have antenna that can reach 500,000 kilometers and that's just the moon really. We would need to put a new satellite up with a much longer range for interplanetary trips. I haven't actually tested whether interplanetary trips will actually work now that I've uh, upgraded and everything is very different. 
There's always the potential for things to be completely off. Uh, it's burning a lot more than I thought it should. Oh, okay, I put seconds instead of meters per second. That's funny. Okay, but actually it uh, unintentionally did great damage to our orbit, actually. Oh, uh, we were in trouble. Okay, that was a big mistake. Uh, meters per second, not seconds. We've only got 24 meters per second left to fix this. Um, okay, we seem to be in line of sight with mission control here. But that might be only because we're sort of at the good latitude for that sort of thing. Well, let's see what kind of maneuver it would take to adjust us back down. Oh, it won't take that much. Let's wait till our altitude is at a uh, good altitude, maybe. Oh, this thing, stop, stop, stop. It's trying to change my orientation every five seconds. No, let's not do that. Electric charge looks great. We seem to be over the Kerbal home continent, really, because of course, in, uh, on Kerbin, the continent looks like Africa, so. Hmm. I should try and pick a point that's more likely to be closer to. Well, there's, no, there's really no point that's closer to. 35,786, because we're too high on both sides. It'd be better to do the adjustment when we reach periapsis, so let me go around to periapsis first. From this angle, it still looks like we don't have direct line of sight with the KSC, but I'm going to be doing this anyway. We could wait until it gets a little bit closer to the right point, but I'm impatient at this juncture, and I can't see what the resulting thing is. Okay, well, I'm going to have to do this burn myself then, instead of relying on one of the computers to do it. Okay. I mean, it seems to be able to uh, maintain communication all the way around its orbit anyway, so let's just make sure it has the right period. Alright, so, uh, yeah, I have to wait. No, I don't have to wait that long. What's up? Hmm. Why is it not reading my control input? Why isn't it throttling up when I throttle up? I mean, this shows stage time change. You can see when I throttle up, stage time changes. But it's not having any effect. It's definitely not lighting. It's definitely active. It's an active engine. We are not time warping. Let me uh, reduce just in case we do not have time warp ah oh I know <laughs> uh, I think the flight computer was interrupting me okay let's do this carefully yeah that's too much I'll go to Apoapsis to fix it. And not Apoapsis. Uh, oh. Yeah, I guess I should fix it here then. 
Uh, great. Right. Let's turn to prograde. Possible to do a accurate burn manually, so I'm going to I'm gonna plot it, and I'm gonna have the flight computer do it. This better be right, because we don't have much delta v left. Let's see. See periapsis seven seventy six. Well, it'll be closer than what we've got now. Okay, and four meters per second. And let's just have it at fifty-ish throttle in twenty minutes. No, no, not dot dot. Twenty minutes. Okay, let's try this. Okay, no more node. Let's say yes. Alright, that's close enough in terms of orbital period for my satisfaction. Alright, so we've got a second G stat up and it definitely has the electric charge to maintain communication with everything, so we'll be able to rely on it more than G stat 1. G stat 1, I'll keep the... it's... Uh, long-range antenna deactivated so it'll retain electric charge this one should be fine though okay we have one more piece of business we need to boost the orbit of auroral valley so that's your raggedy madrid auroral valley well considering how few solar panels these things have it's amazing they survive at all uh, and they might not. But for now, we need to focus on the task at hand. Well, we seem to be close enough to the apoapsis that we could raise our periapsis here. So let me turn to it. Oh, this, this uses hydrazine to turn. Okay. Uh, let's get SAS on and do that. Oh, and it'll, it'll use hydrazine to do the orbital correction. That's fine. So let's do that. Okay, well that will give us uh, sufficient periapsis. But let's see now. Okay, so I think we point in the direction of the node that I've currently got organized here in order to mitigate the whole... Yeah, so you can see the orbital period going down but the periapsis going up. Eight, 80 milliseconds? I think that's close enough. Okay, so I think Aurora Valley is uh, set up properly, and so we are ready to do further missions. Our communication system, wow, look how big the Pacific Ocean is. We don't see any land here. This is Hawaii. The Pacific, I mean, you, can, you approach Earth from this point of view, and you would think it was an ocean world, right? I mean, there's like there's no land, maybe there's something going on over there, but wow, the Pacific Ocean, seriously. Anyway, um, yeah. So our communication satellite network seems to be in order as far as Earth is concerned, and we need to look into setting one up for the moon in the next episode. So things seem to be working out fine. Uh, if there's any really game-killing glitch that we encounter, I still have the old save and the old installation 
uh, that we can revert back to. But for now, it looks like we can proceed with all the updates and uh, point two, three, point five with asteroids. So, on that note, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please do leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.